Hey everyone, it's Rebecca from St. Mary's Home. So today we are on Module 3 of Life Skills Housing Smart. So today's module is all about making your house a home. So childproofing your house as well as what essentials you need for your house as well as just tips and tricks on making your space your own space. So let's get started. Alright, so here I have four photos of different areas in a house and I want you guys to just think what do you think is essential to have in each room. Obviously, that's going to differ from person to person as everyone has different views on what's essential, what they want, what they think they need. So we have a living room, a bedroom, a kitchen, and a bathroom. So just think to yourself, what is essential items that should go in these rooms? So we have some list of what are some essential items that can go in these rooms. So let's say for the kitchen, dishes, pots and pans, baking trays if you're a big baker, um, utensils and a tray to keep them in, oven mitts, dish soap, drying rack, can opener, spatula, spoons, tongs, tin foil, plastic wrap, Ziploc, bags, containers, as well as a microwave and a toaster. For bathroom, it can be toilet paper, towels, toothpaste and toothbrush, plunger, soap, shampoo, conditioner, shower curtain, just some basic essentials. For the living room, some essentials might be a couch or some chairs, lamps, um, coffee tables, a TV and a TV stand, extension cords and power bars. Um, for bedrooms, it can be a bed, children's bed, pillows, sheets, blankets, hangers, lamps, and dressers. Some other essentials to look at when you move into a place is what cleaning supplies do you want? A broom, mop in a bucket, toilet brush and toilet cleaner, sponges, all-purpose cleaner, garbage bags. For the pantry, what are some essential things that you want to have on hand all the time? Salt and pepper, pasta, rice, coffee, tea, cereals, um, flour, sugar, and other spices. As well, what are some staple groceries you want to have in the fridge at all times? Bread, butter, eggs, milk, potatoes, um, some different produces that you like. And then some general essentials could be a laundry basket, laundry detergent, paper towels, a first aid kit, um, blinds, curtains, basic toolkits and flashlight and batteries in case you run into a power outage or anything like that. So I know myself, I don't like spending too much money on things that I need, on like essential items, you know, cleaning supplies, kitchen things. I don't like spending too much money. So I have some tips on how to create a space you love with essential items and meaningful items on a budget. So my first recommendation and the best recommendation in my opinion is the Dollar Store. Dollarama or Dollar Tree, great prices. If you go to Dollar Tree, the most you're spending is $1.25 on an item. Dollarama, the most you're spending is $4 on an item. Compared to other stores, that's an amazing deal and you can get every kind of cleaner there. You can get mops, brooms, sponges, um, kitchen stuff, bowls, measuring cups, knives, utensils, everything. The Dollar Store has everything for such a good price. I'm addicted to that store. So that's my number one recommendation on how to ball on a budget, but also create the space you need and love. Um, as well as Pinterest has some great DIYs. Um, so you can do some DIY artwork, hang that up, hang up some of your kids' artwork, and just make it a home, make it unique in your own. As well as Facebook groups and Kijiji have great options for affordable selling options. So Facebook groups has some good buy and sell groups. They even have groups that offer free stuff where people just go and post things that they don't want anymore and they're giving away for free. So those are really good. As well as there's also free store options. Um, a quick Google search will show you some near you. And yeah, so these are just some very good budget-friendly tips for making your space your own, as well as getting all the essentials you need without breaking the bank too much. It's important to create a safe place for not only yourself, but your child. So one thing that's really important is making sure to child-proof your apartment or room or just space in general, wherever you move into. Child-proofing is really important. So I have some different rooms to go over and ways you can child-proof them. So first we're going to start with the kitchen. So for the kitchen, you should use the back burner when cooking as well as turn the pot handles in. So let's say if your toddler walks by, they're not able to accidentally knock over the handle, which would um, then pour whatever was in the pot on the child or on the ground and yeah. As well as make sure to lock knives and like cleaning products that could be poisonous. Um, 
Uh, lid on a garbage can because, you know, toddlers and children get curious and you never know what they can get into. Baby gates are also a great option to install. When you're in the kitchen, always make sure you're supervising your baby. And if you're not able to supervise your baby, keeping them in a high chair is another great option. Um, again, keep food and poisonous products separate from each other. You don't want any accidental com contamination. Um, as well as avoid tablecloths that can be pulled because if your toddler gets curious and pulls the tablecloth and there's dishes on there, that could um, increase the chances of dishes breaking and someone getting cut. Uh, da -da! Uh, keep cords from appliances out of arm's reach. You don't want your child to be curious and be like, ooh, what happens when I pull this and then the microwave fall? <laughs> that would not be good. Um, as well as clean up messes immediately, it will not only keep your space cleaner so there's not much cleaning at the end, but it will also avoid any slips or anything. Um, if you drop a glass, a tip is first vacuum it or sweep it and then use a wet paper towel and that will collect all the extra glass that you couldn't really see or couldn't really get. Um, put away breakable items, make sure they're not in reach of children as well as never carry your children in hot foods or liquid at the same time because you want to avoid spilling anything on anyone. So let's move on to childproofing your bathroom. So of course when you're giving your child a bath, never leave them alone in the tub as well as don't fill up the bathtub more than a few centimeters just because a child can actually drown in as little as 1.5 inches of water. Um, as well as when you're giving your child a bath, always keep one hand on the child during bath time to prevent any falling and accidentally hitting their head or getting water up their nose, anything like that. Uh, placing a non-skid mat in the bathtub will help with slipping and preventing that, as well as keep the toilet lid closed because kids get very curious. You don't want them to get in there and accidentally drown, hit their head. Same with garbage cans, like we talked about before. Make sure it has a lid or out of reach of children. Um, as well as lock up any of your substances that can be poisonous. This includes different medications, mouthwash, cosmetics, perfume, to avoid any um, way of your kid ingesting it. Uh, make sure your child can't lock the door from the inside just in case they accidentally lock themselves in and you can't get to them. Uh, shampoo and soap should be kept out of arm's reach. Hair tools as well should be kept out of arm's reach and unplugged at all times. Um, and yeah, just like I would just wrap up like your straightener and put it to a corner where the child can't get it. As well as when you're giving your child a bath, make sure to check the temperature of the water with your hand just to make sure it's not too hot and not too cold and it's the perfect temperature. Um, keep the bathroom door closed at all times when you're not using it if that's possible. This will prevent any curiosity from your child going in and getting into a bit of trouble. As well as when you are giving your child a bath again, seating them away from the faucet will prevent them trying to turn it on. So yeah, these are just some other tips on how to childproof your bathroom. So now childproofing your bedroom, some tips and tricks to do this is when you have shelves, make sure to secure them to the wall as well as ensure that your dressers aren't able to be tipped over just in case your toddler gets a little curious and wants to go for a little climb. Um, as well as place night lights away from bed and bedding. This will avoid any burning of the sheets or possible fires. As well as never put a crib or other furniture near the window. Avoid plants in kids' rooms just in case they decide to eat it or anything. Um, cover any unused electrical outlets with those little covers just so they don't, again, get curious and try sticking their fingers in there. Um, never leave extension cords plugged in where the baby can reach and be burned or shocked um, if they decide to play with it. And don't put stuffed animals, toys, and pillows or extra blankets in the crib. This avoids any accidental suffocation of the child and it's just a very big safety hazard so make sure the crib is empty. If you're living in a place with stairs, it's very important to make sure that you childproof it so your child doesn't accidentally fall down them. So basically getting a safety gate and making sure they are properly installed to prevent any falls, as well as don't buy the pressure gates to use at the top of the stairs because this can actually fall over when a child leans on them, which can end up in your child falling down the stairs. So buy the gates that are anchored to the wall or the banister just so it's more sturdy and reliable. 
So wherever you decide to live, there's always going to be maintenance and repairs that you're going to have to deal with. So usually when you move into an apartment, they'll give you a list of things you can check off to say this needs fixing, needs a light bulb, and you can give that back to your landlord and they'll come and help. If you're in an apartment building or other living areas like that, there's usually like an on-call person or you can email someone. So right now we're going to talk about who's responsible for a repair or a maintenance request. So landlords are responsible for repairing holes in the wall unless you made them yourself, unclogging the toilet, unless you flush things that you shouldn't have been flushing down the toilet, um, fixing a leaky tap, insect infestations. This is very important. If you do have an insect infestation like roaches or bed bugs, immediately um, let your landlord know so they can get pest control in there to start doing treatments. A uh, broken window they are responsible for unless you broke it yourself, as well as every seven years they have to replace the carpet. So you as a tenant are responsible for changing a fuse that burned out, clearing a slow drain with some Drano, um, cleaning an unruly shower head, dealing with an immediate kitchen fire, as well as putting up shelves that you want. If you want like an extra shelf in the kitchen, that's your responsibility. And make sure you're allowed to put holes in the wall before you actually do that. Communication with your landlord is really important. Don't be afraid to ask them questions. All right, so that's it from module three. I hope you guys enjoyed, maybe took some information in. So again, if you want to test your knowledge and be entered to win a gift card, there is a link in the bio to a survey that you can just fill out, take a picture when you're done, a screenshot, and email it to the email below. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.